welcome to episode three of Before Tomorrow for episode 514. What's it called? The one where we're trapped in the TV. <laughs> Written by James and Grania. The one where we're trapped on Zoom forever. Yeah, the one where we're trapped in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot more episodes of that. Uh, so we have a lot of questions this week. Um, you know, again, Fans, I love you guys, but why does every question have to be about Gary yet again? And <laughs> I just, I had to comb through it. I was up all night, but I did find enough that we could talk about things other than Gary. Because I know <laughs> you guys are, must be sick of it just like I am. So let's, uh, should we get into it? Let's get into it. Hit, it, hit us. First, oh, wow. That's a great mug, James. Uh, <laughs> first of all, related to that, Jess TM7 August D2 Lockdown, what a ridiculous name, wants to know, have you drank enough water today? Mm. That's a good question. Um, there's water in coffee, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess the answer is yes. All right. <laughs> 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 um, Blackjack DRX wants to know, this season has been awesome. What are the routine or interesting things you do to boost your creative juices? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. We have a great room that, like our writer's room, and people just talk about things that are interesting that don't have to do with the show, and then, like, it'll spark something, or, like, we'll figure out a way to, like, get it in. Just, just people talking about their day, I feel like, is always fruitful. <laughs> Yeah. Classic creative booster. Yeah. I do like to meditate before writing. It sounds a little woo-woo, but I like to like try to expand the mind and just like open yourself up to the universe and all possibilities. Right wow. <laughs> how long, how long of a meditation and is it guided or are you doing it yourself? I don't think I've ever done more than a 15 minute meditation. <laughs> I'm not a big meditation expert, but just 15 minutes and you just invite invite the universe in. James and I have like opposite processes, which is why it's so fun to write together. That's not my process, but um, my, I have an eight month old baby and every morning, like I give her a little like massage and say like, open yourself up to the possibilities of the day. <laughs> like, I totally dip into wow. your dippy, dippy stuff. <laughs> that is a daddy meditation. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Wow. All right. Fascinating. Um, V Behrad Tarazi Thirst Squad wants to know. Whoa, I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> what TV show would you all like to be trapped in? Ooh. Oh, interesting. I love True Blood. I'd love to live in a world where like vampires and werewolves are real just for a little bit of time. Why are you looking at me like that? They're so terrifying. Sexy. It's terrifying. No, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and fairies, it's all real. That, I want magic to be real. Wow. Oh, man. James? A good show to be trapped in. Um, I guess the shows I've been watching most recently are the Great, which takes place in like Russia, and I, I don't even know when it takes place—the 1700s. But yeah. uh, basically, living in the past is always terrible. Like you're always going to die of disease, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> There's so many conveniences of modern life that you would have to sacrifice any time you go in the past. So I guess not that. <laughs> I, was watching, yeah. I guess I don't want to be trapped on a show where I could die easily from disease <laughs> and lack of sewage. <laughs> oh no, I want to be trapped on um, uh, Never Have I Ever, the Mindy Kaling show, because oh, yeah. oh, I would have like Starring Ramona Young. Yes, yes. shout out to Ramona. Oh. Shout out to Ramona. The greatest. That is, that's a great choice. Yeah, I would say for me, it's probably something like, it's not on anymore, but Seinfeld, where like the, the problems are ultimately kind of trivial. Like they're not really life or death. So you're still safe, even if you're complaining about the grocery bag or versus like plastic versus paper bag. It's ultimately like not a big deal, though maybe it is because plastic bags are really bad for the environment. But that's a different issue. <laughs> I also love Dairy Girls just because I think that cast is so funny. 
and I love Belfast. If we have any fans in Belfast, that would be great to know. I, I mean, there's got to be one, right? For Please. sure, Grant. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> On a side note, I, when I was live on the CW uh, Legends Instagram page, we were doing live chats, and I could not believe how global the show is. Really? Like, oh, it was God. insane. Every continent, except for Antarctica, nobody watches in Antarctica, which is bullshit, but <laughs> everywhere else, everywhere. It's amazing. Really amazing. If you All right, next question. Arctica outreach. We gotta yeah. crack that nut. <laughs> we got it. There got to be like a penguin episode or like a uh, <laughs> stereotyping Aunt Arctica. I'm sure they're into different things than penguins. That's true. That's true. I heard they have a burgeoning theater scene now that Broadway's closed. <laughs> well, we did an Antarctica joke in um uh, Mr. Parker's cul-de-sac. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Constantine to Antarctica. He went there, yeah. Oh, you're right. Oh my God. Okay. They they should be yeah, watching. That didn't get the fans. I, maybe they wanted actually to see him there. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> uh, Captain Pantsuit wants to know, making Ava co-captain, is it something that came up over the seasons or was it something you already decided from the beginning? I think it was kind of organic. Yeah. I mean, most decisions in our show are kind of organic. And like, <laughs> organic <laughs> being another word for... <laughs> Figuring it out on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Make uh, no, it felt right for the character. And I think it was kind of like a... It had a lot to do with Sarah Lance's story and her availability to be captain. And, um, also, she's such a boss, that character. Like, she ran the Time Bureau. To have her just, like, on the ship as like one of the goobers taking orders, that was never gonna happen because she's Ava Lance, yeah. Um, Ava Lance, <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> Whoa, did you just spoil something? What was that? Where did no. that come from? Holy <laughs> shit balls, did everyone hear that? Okay, next question. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you were just responding to the hashtag Ava Lance. I get that, totally. Um, Kim Merville wants to know, can you tell us if the gross stuff that Constantine eats or drinks is something actually really tasty made to look gross? Good question. <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, Adam, you might know that answer better than us. You yeah, I did, I did have one sip of demon's blood and it really, it tasted uh, kind of, yeah, full of iron. I think the props department is really, they want us to really feel it. So it was, I think they used real, I think it was like uh, some sort of like blood from a, from like a morgue and they just, you know, no. brought, brought it in. <laughs> they drained some poor Canadian who died that day. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, no fresh people were killed for the prop, but it was already. You know what would be a good joke is to like, put something that was kind of gross in and see what Matt did, because he's so committed, I think he would just like power through. Totally. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Um, <laughs> Lay wants to know, how did you decide which television series to put the legends in for this episode? There was I mean, a version that was different. There was a version where 24 was, um, Star Trek, right? <laughs> yeah. Sarah, we're gonna be like Jack Bauer. Although, can you imagine what if we'd done The Wire and it was Sarah and Ava as Avon and Stringer? <laughs> That's awesome. That, that could be next, next season. I, well, one thing I like about this episode is like the, the wave rider gets to kind of dress up in a costume and mm -hmm. like all our cast always gets to wear like period outfits, but like this time the wave rider gets to dress up as the Star Trek Starship Enterprise. And like, <laughs> I don't know, I think that's pretty neat. And, that's and, awesome. and like we got to dress up Constantine's Manor too. So um, yeah. I think that all kind of went into decision making. Yeah, our production is unstoppable. They are a force. Without them, the show would be nothing. <laughs> totally, no doubt. Um, Tala as cats wants to know, will there be cats? And Tala as donuts wants to know, will there be donuts? Great questions. <laughs> there should <laughs> always be both cats and donuts. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe. 
maybe not in this one. Sorry, Tala's cats and Tala's donuts. Maybe there will be. I guess you got to tune in. <laughs> I've seen that Twitter account. It's fantastic. She usually provides, or he, they usually provide the uh, the donuts and the cats. Oh, really? So they just make donut and cat memes? It's awesome. Yeah, well, there's a good, um, Tala is dressed up as a Gromulin in, in this one. And so I'll be interested to see how that looks as a donut or a cat. <laughs> Also, Callan looks adorable as a Gromulan. Like, I don't know how she does it. She makes that, she makes like a big forehead with veins look really cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. Here's um, a little Easter egg that um, the costume department told me about. Um, the scene where the, the Gromulans are, where it's like Matt and Nick and some other people, which we won't spoil. <laughs> They're all dressed up as Gromulans. And I think four of them are in wigs. And the four wigs, it's so complicated, but it is an Easter egg. They're wearing <laughs> wigs of characters that they've had scenes with earlier in this or previous seasons. Whoa. So, so just digest that when trying wow. to figure out who's wearing <laughs> whose wigs. If so they're wearing wigs that the, each individual person that is wearing a wig has that, that character has interacted with that wig wearer in a previous episode. Yes. Wow. Exactly. If someone can find that, we will give them a prize. I don't know what the <laughs> but that's, we'll that's get, awesome. We'll the one. Someone will find it. I believe, <laughs> I believe in the Legends fans. Um, CJ wants to know, does Constantine have multiple trench coat, tra trench coats? Or does he wear the same one every day? Same one. He's got a special one. It's dirty, though. Is he dry cleaning it? What's his cleaning process? Does he just <laughs> smell? You're dry cleaning it. That's who's dry cleaning <laughs> <That's true>. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. That's a good answer. Wait, are you asking these questions? No, you're asking them as Adam. Okay, you're not asking them as Gary. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not asking about Gary. I can if you want, but... Yes, Gary! But Gary's not allowed to have a mustache, so... <laughs> <laughs> Is he still, like, abiding by Time Bureau regulations with the mustache and the short <laughs> hair? Of course. Oh, of course, yeah. You can't... A mustache can't go over the corner of the lips. That's yeah, in the, that's the, in the book. Rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go below there. <laughs> yeah. You never know when you need to plot with your tongue on the side you don't want to get any like you know little stray hairs in the mouth and then you could choke with a you know like a fur ball it's not it's, it's not a good thing <laughs> uh katie's arms enthusiast wants to know don't you guys get tired of killing sarah i mean did it become a hobby to all the writers p.s despite that you're awesome though <laughs> It's so much fun to bring her back, though. <laughs> it is. I do think at the end of, you know, this whole 20 season arc we've plotted out, she'll be revealed to be, like, a goddess. I mean, she's died and come back. She's so incredible. Like, yeah. she's the one true ruler of all the DC shows. Totally. So <laughs> obvious. So obvious. She saw it at Atropos and then didn't fucking flinch whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> at one point um the book club was reading a book called uh the girl who got murdered too much <laughs> 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 it was kind of a reference to sarah <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um related to sarah coco has stopped functioning wants to know in all caps why does sarah have a ring on that left finger hmm I need answers, please, 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 please. What? I think it was just <laughs> Sarah's jewelry. Which finger was it on? I think, I think she means she had a ring, or he. I don't know. Coco stopped functioning, uh, <laughs> or they. Whatever they want to know why on the on the on the wedding finger. <laughs> All says stay tuned. Stay <laughs> also, like, don't a lot of women that just don't want to be bothered by people do that to, like, she's badass, she's a babe, she doesn't want people, like, chatting her up. I'm taken. Leave me alone. Sure. <laughs> 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 that is a question for Katie Lots. I think we should lob that one to her. All right. I'll, I'll let her know. 
<laughs> um, Rotem Shaked wants to know, in the latest episode, why didn't Sarah tell the team about her vision in order to change the outcome? In Shipbroken, we saw Sarah using her powers to see what's about to happen in order to do things differently and save the day. So why didn't she this time? She just knew with her powers, there was no changing this. And she just had to help Ava get to the team to that place in the hopes that once Sarah died, Ava would be strong enough to somehow use the loom of fate and uh, save the day once again. Yep, she had faith in her team to come through. Love it. That's beautiful. That was a great episode. Oh, so heartbreaking. So great. Oh my God, loved it. Yeah, that, um, shot of, that shot of Charlie running through the bar. Oh, oh so good. Maisie's so good. I mean, our, our whole cast is so good, but uh, yeah. I running through the bar and then coming out with, that, with the hand on her. Yeah, that was really funny. Them, them, like rigging that hand to be like touching her her <laughs> shoulder as she was running in. Hilarious! <laughs> oh my god, what was it like dying on screen, Adam? Was that the first time you died on screen? No, no, we killed you in um <laughs> two episodes <laughs> previous to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the in the in the dog one. Is yeah. Gary the new Sarah Lance of multiple deaths? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. He might be. <laughs> uh, Polly wants to know, was the thing between Zari and Constantine just a one-time thing? Please say no. We like their sexual attention. I think we're going to keep exploring that one. And not uh, to say that would ever impede Nate and Zari 1.0's relationship. Two nor would it impede Gary and Constantine's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is that the impediment? <laughs> I do have a question. Yes. If there's like a love triangle is in most television shows, what do you call a love triangle with like two different versions of the same person? Like oh, a, that's like a hypercube. That's like a hyper triangle. That, that's like in four dimensional space. Yeah. 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 A hypercube. We've invented the love hypercube. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's a love hypercube. Um, Sydney Truehart wants to know how do you write Constantine's spells? Ooh. Interesting. Mm, well, Matt helps out a ton he really knows the character and like really studies the character and he gave us a note which was like hey constantine doesn't only cast spells in latin like he knows like all of these like archaic languages and he was like i want to cast spells in welsh and i want to cast spells in like well, i don't know old whatever vikings spoke <laughs> um although we did have one line that we put in gaelic because of that and then when we were on set matt and i were like quite sound that great. Sorry, Gaelic speakers. Um, back to Latin. <laughs> so uh, sometimes you just want to have that cool Latin magical oomph. But yeah. uh, we look at the comics too. I had one in Romanian, which I thought was really fun and interesting. <laughs> Who did that one? Every writer has like a different uh, method. <laughs> Our Romanian writer. Yeah, one of the Romanian writers. <laughs> <laughs> um abby is binging shira wants to know what were your favorite tv shows growing up that encouraged you to become a tv writer mm. Ooh, juicy i i have a list of tv shows that i love there's four of them growing up they were star trek simpsons saturday night live and sesame street and those were my uh, inspiration. And alliteration too, that's beautiful, really. <laughs> They're all S's, I noticed, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, we didn't really, my parents didn't want me to watch television for some reason, but we could watch movies with dad late at night, and he liked a lot of John Wayne, so there was a lot of like The Quiet Man. So I guess, <laughs> old John Wayne movies. <laughs> Johnny, you love like what was the what was the helicopters versus dragons movie that we told you about? And 
It was helicopters versus dragons. Yeah, there was some Christian Bale was in this helicopter versus dragons movie in like two thousand four or something. You missed that one. Oh no, it, I do know. The movies that made me want to write were Willow, Last of the Mohicans, and Princess Bride, and Real Genius. A lot of Val Kilmer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taste what about um, Top Secret? Top Secret's good, too, but Willow, oh, man, so good. I showed Top Secret to my wife, and she was like, there's so much singing and dancing in this movie. I, I love it. <laughs> like, there Sounds really like the are. episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Love it. I was just um, thinking, I wonder, well, no. Uh, well, okay. I was thinking next season, what if the genres we choose are all Val Kilmer movie genres? We could do a Top Secret episode. We could do a Willow episode. Real Genius. Writes itself. Yeah, I mean, those, those Zucker, Abram, Zucker movies. Amazing. The Naked Gun, Airplane, all, I mean, that stuff is, I just watched The Naked Gun last week. Hilarious. Still hilarious. <laughs> Super funny. So if you guys haven't watched Naked Gun, watch it, people. All right, <laughs> next question. Uh, Coco has stopped functioning. Oh, that's another one. Coco has stopped functioning. Are there any plans for Able Ends to interact with a child in the future seasons? Ooh. Uh, Where's this question coming from, Coco? And also, like, why why they're just they're a fresh couple. Why you gotta pressure them to have a kid already? Let them enjoy their life fighting crime and saving the world together suddenly they gotta have a kid and like well we always joke in the room that they have like seven kids like the other legends are there. <laughs> <laughs> that's great um hmm. uh cj wants to know is gary the best interim legend ever yes or yes great question <laughs> but my real question is what does gary do when john's with the legends so he can't teach him his magic huh? what does gary do when he's i mean we've established he is cleaning john's oh coat. yes and he's, <laughs> he's learned some magic he's learned some magic on his own absolutely yeah. And he's also keeping up the the business, the uh, the ghost fighting business. Absolutely, yes. What was it called? <laughs> Gary and Mona together are pretty sweet. We've got a lot of great Gary and Mona scenes in this episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is the return of Ramona Yacht. I was very excited to get to write for her. That was awesome. Ultimate buds. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sky wants to know, is the writer's room as chaotic as the show? <laughs> there are a lot of snacks. <laughs> Less so now that we meet over Zoom. That's but uh, I think people are very passionate. I also think we like to make each other laugh. So some of the best ideas just come from us trying to titillate other people as a real weird word. But, yeah, you can. No, know. it's a great word. I love that word. Uh, yeah yeah i think it's there's a, like it's funny it's like the amalgamation of like crazy ideas and like like what's the crazy stuff you can think of but then also like it's a tv show we had and like just getting like trying to find order in the chaos is like what you know mm -hmm. trying to find yeah like the emotional human stories in the chaos chaotic fun chaotic fun yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> um CJ wants to know, if you could have anyone guest star on the show, who would you want? Ooh. I think Darius from Atlanta, because I feel like his mind would just be blown by time travel. Like, it would just be so fun to see him react to the ship and everything. But a real human person. Hmm. I mean, we talked about Last of the Mohicans, so bring Daniel Day-Lewis out of retirement. <laughs> I think that's an obvious one. <laughs> He's secretly been itching to do that. Yeah, I agree. Or um, we should get Fleabag. Uh, what's her name? Ooh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Waller yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Awesome. Or Taika Waititi, just because I love Taika Waititi. <laughs> I feel like he would love to direct Legends. He probably hasn't seen an episode, but if he had, he would love to direct it. Totally. I'm into that. About, like. We, we saw that David Lynch short where he has a long scene with a cat. Or was it a cat or was it a monkey? It was a monkey. 
And people were like, we should get David Lynch to direct a legend. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, uh, how much of the, epi- of the, you know, the script he would record in like the eight and a half days he has? Like, we probably need <laughs> seven days of reshoots, but like, it, like, it was great. <laughs> that day and a half that you keep, though, would be incredible. <laughs> oh, I know. I think it'd be fun to see Channing Tatum. I feel like he and uh, Nate would have a lot of fun together. Totally. Totally. I love it. A shirtless Channing Tatum, Nate scene. Love it. <laughs> That's what you said. I did not pitch that. <laughs> I'm, I'm pitching it right now. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Dancing, shirtless, <laughs> pantsless, thong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. I think Nick uh, would do that. Nick would be game for a lot. Oh, it would be amazing. It would be hilarious. It would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Lay wants to know, love the idea of Ava Lance as Spock and Kirk. How'd you come up with that? I actually believe that was my sister. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and shout then out I to think Gia. I stole her idea and went into the room with it. Because we've been talking about other options for TV shows. And she was like, they totally remind me of Spock and Kirk. And I was like, you're right, you mad genius. <laughs> That's awesome. It's yeah. such a good, like, amped up version of what their relationship actually is. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Way to go, Gia. <laughs> um, Jenna Lyons wants to know, why is this the best show ever? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because we have time travel and we can go back and fix the episodes once we make a mistake we could just <laughs> go back and make them better that's a great answer i think our actors are like treasures and totally uh i don't know i don't know if they get enough credit and i want you all to get more credit because i think what you guys do is amazing it's so great to write for you guys. Like the the voices are Thank so you. Thank beautiful you. and clear and funny and like moving. They're great. Every one of them. Right. So the reason it's the best show is because the actors. Great. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hager wants to know. Uh, did you have to watch episodes of the TV shows that are in the next episode when you were writing? <laughs> <laughs> did you do research of we don't want to we don't want to necessarily give away we've talked about star trek but we don't know want to necessarily give away the other potential shows but uh, asking as research did you watch the shows that this episode is based on yes i mean i don't know if we can say but certainly i think we were fans of i was a fan of one of the shows and uh yeah everyone knows the other show it's in the zeitgeist yeah, and James grew up with the first one that we've talked about because it's one of his S's. It's one of my S's. One yeah, of the pillar although, S's. Although, we, I mean, when Guggenheim heard we were talking about Star Trek, he just like flipped his lid. He was like, yes, do Star Trek. I love Star Trek. And he got so excited about it. He, yeah. So like that, he really made it sing. It was great. Yeah. That's it awesome. Was, yeah. Um, well, then related to that, Crystal wants to know, how was it having Mark Guggenheim as a director? It was wonderful. He was fantastic. He had so many just creative ideas and shots. And I, I feel like when people watch the show, they're going to be super impressed with the directing. Totally. I feel the same way. I feel like when we were working with him, he had so many ideas, redirections, which I don't know of all the actors. I certainly love it when a director's like, okay, try it this way. Oh, that was great. Try it this way. Try it this way. He always had new creative options, which was really fun to work with, so. Yeah, his mind works so fast. He has just so many great ideas. And I yeah, I was surprised so that was his first, that's his directorial debut. Yeah. Amazing. We Remember when we showed him the outline and he was like, Are you oh, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> and, then, and then we showed him the script and he was like this is this is a this is just a bigger prank right you're not actually going to ask a first time director to do a 90 scene episode <laughs> like that that's crazy right also he's basically had to direct three different types of shows plus our own show for four shows because he uses kind of the shots and the milieu of the shows we're aping 
in his shows. So he basically directed like four episodes in one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was impressive what he pulled off. Yeah. Amazing. I can't wait to watch it. Um, Michael wants to know, are the production design and costume teams ever thrown off by the amazing and bizarre things you ask from them week after week? No. They always like see it and raise it. Yeah. They make us look good. It's yeah. amazing. For real. I love this that. This episode in particular is just like them showing off. It's great. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Um, Maria wants to know, Gary was into Constantine, but now he's into Zari. Uh, when will Gary find his true love? I don't know that Gary's into Zari. But oh, no, I think he's saying, and now Constantine's into Zari. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yes, yes. When will Gary but, find his true love? Yeah. Will Gary find love? That's the eternal question. I feel and, like and will he be happy if he does? Or is the journey what makes him happy? Mm, I feel like that's a personal <laughs> reflection there, Adam. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the kind of person that is like really Gary's true match would be amazing and also like yeah really outside the box <laughs> like maybe Bebo is Gary's true match <laughs> <laughs> he definitely yeah sleeps with a Bebo doll there's no question about that <laughs> um, final question here we've been blowing through these questions guys Linda Fitzpatrick wants to know, what's it like to be on set as a writer? Do you have to come up with new dialogue to solve unexpected issues or do you mainly just get to enjoy the filming process? <laughs> it's intense. It's very intense. <laughs> yeah. Especially on a show like ours that doesn't have a lot of time to shoot. So we're always kind of snipping here, adding things here, reacting to actors, the director. I mean, just seeing stuff on screen live, you kind of understand what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, there's also a lot of downtime as on any film set. <laughs> yeah. Right. And but like how much communication is there between like, oh shit, we have to change this thing. I need to like call LA and we have to talk about what? Uh, usually it's more like, like one of the actors, like we have some, really smart actors like Katie or Jess will be like hey you know this scene doesn't make sense and you'll be like oh shit <laughs> right it doesn't make sense and then you'll be like panicking to like try and like make it make sense and um and so and that's when the pressure's on because like obviously like between you know um read through and when and the first shot like you have like 40 minutes to like get the scene right <laughs> and so uh um it, but it's good because all the actors are so friendly and, and like invested and like want to work with you and to get the scene right. And so those are sometimes the best scenes come from like working with the actors right on the set. Yeah. Awesome. Well, on that note, once again, the actors, the reason why this show is the best show on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you fuckers. It's the writers. Oh, no. I think so. <laughs> well, that's the beautiful thing about TV. There's, it takes a village. It truly does. So. Yes, no. absolutely. Collaboration. It's beautiful. Well, thank you guys. Grani and James, episode 514. Watch it tonight or whenever you can. Speak and Antarctica. Antarctica, start watching. Yeah, Antarctica, on, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Do you stop recording?